when you were able to get a, a group of people, parliamentarians in the business community together to try to raise awareness and also raise funds to get this girl out of jail, um, that is a tricky scenario because and a lot of people who work in certain scenarios, Iran being one of them, will tell you that sometimes the, the vocal message from the outside community compromises what they're doing inside. How did you manage that? We had to make certain choices. When I was first campaigning for her, you know, I was contemplating, do I bring her case forward to the U.S. government? At the time, though, Bush was um, in power and uh, decided maybe it's not the right time or place. So, you know, it's like a chess game. You have to know where to make the, the moves of the chess pieces and decide what's going to hurt or help her. And there was a part in the campaign, and you'll read it in the book, where I thought that our pressure had brought her to a situation where she was going to be executed imminently. And, you know, that was a very scary day. I was working with my counterpart, Mina, and, um, you know, I was crying and saying, oh, my gosh, did we cause her file to be sent to Tehran? See, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the choices that you mm -hmm. have to make. And so what happens after that? Well, after that, uh, there was so much international pressure on the head of judiciary in Iran that uh, she finally got a stay of execution and was, had the opportunity to have a new trial. And that's where um, she was exonerated, basically, of the murder charges and released. Who you're married to is, who anybody's married to is not really usually a part of the conversation. But at the end of your book, it's such a strong statement about needing regime change in Iran. And I read that and I was thinking to myself, okay, as an individual, that's amazing. It's true. Mm -hmm. But when your partner is the minister of defense mm -hmm. of a country, that statement carries more in a way, you know, like that, that, that is a little bit more complicated. Mm. When you wrote it, did you, have, did you think at all about that? Not at all. I have never even Has contemplated it. He hasn't brought it up yet? <laughs> no, he hasn't. Uh, but again, the word regime change can have so many different connotations. By the way, Peter McKay, for the record, Peter McKay, that's, you know, mm -hmm. who's been in this red chair as well. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, regime change, to some, it would mean military instigation, uh, uh, intervention. Right. But I absolutely abhor war. I don't think uh, that's the solution for Iran. I think there's the a lot of Does the Minister of Defense know that you abhor war? Oh, he does. <laughs> he is the Minister of Defense. Right. He's not the Minister of War. Of offense, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's here to protect our national sovereignty <laughs> and to help in situations when there's disasters in Haiti or Afghanistan, bringing education to the girls there. There's, there's a lot of um, good in, in the role of Defense Minister. Um, but uh, in this particular case, um, Yes, I, I am all for supporting the people from within and um, having this regime crumble because it's the worst thing that's happened to our country in 30 years.